In this video, we'll have a look at the ultimate basics of the collections framework of Java. Later, we'll go more in depth for each collection, but right now, let's stay on the surface. What is the collections framework? The collection framework is actually invented to store objects of, that are actually a group of objects rather than a single object. Well, we've seen something like that already, arrays namely, but these are way more powerful and way more flexible for working with groups of objects. The collection framework consists of interfaces and implementations, and it has many built-in methods. We won't go in depth this video, so we'll leave out the methods for now, but let's just look at the four main categories of collections that are still relevant today. We actually have four. We have a list. A list is the most straightforward collection. It's just an ordered list of values, and you can use the index of the list to retrieve a value. So the first element on the list, it has an index zero, etc. Then we have a set. And the set is a bit more special already. It is unordered and it has only unique values. These unique values are required because it's unordered and there are no indexes. So we need some sort of way to get the values out. And that is by the value itself. In order to know to get what value out, it has to be unique. Then we have the queue. And queue are very much like the everyday queues we know. So if you get in line at the store, you get in the queue, the values, or in this case, the customers, they're processed in the order they walked in the queue. So only the ends of the queue are accessible. In some queues, you can only access the front of the queue. Some, you have double-ended queues, but only the ends of the queue are accessible and the values are stored in the order they were added. Then the last one is the map. And the map contains of key value pairs. So in a map, you're actually storing pairs constantly. And the key has to be unique because you use the key to retrieve the value from the map. But the value, it can be anything and it's arbitrary. So these collections, they're very closely related to the generics because they all use generics. We also have collections that don't use generics, but this is legacy and we don't want to use these any longer. Right now, when we create a collection, we're actually going to say what will be on the collection. So we're going to say what kind of objects can we expect on the collection. And we do this with a greater than and smaller than sign, as we saw in the video on generics. So this is what it would look like. So we say list of string, and we call it string list. And then don't mind the array list has set array the queue, etc. on this slide. We'll just look at the first part, the list, the set, the queue, and the map, and later we'll see more. So as you can see, we have a list and it's of type string. And we can just add something to the list with the add method. The same for set and the same for queue. Then we have map, and map is different. We don't use add, we use put instead of add. And as we'll see next week, map is different in more ways, but for now, don't worry too much about it. Just know that the collection framework consists of four main groups of collections, namely lists, sets, queues, and maps. And you'll be good to go for definitely another week.